this question is a little not as um I guess fun. The uh, Christmas Eve skate from Mike Keenan. Uh, how uh, how did that all go down? That wasn't supposed to be a, a bag skate, I don't think. No. Well, it was so impactful that I had a Christmas lunch on Friday with my golf buddies, mm-hmm. and uh, and and actually there were there were a handful of of former players in, in that are regular golf friends of mine. Mark Osborne, who played for the Rangers, Mark Napier, who played for Edmonton and Montreal, Mike Pellick, who played for the Leafs. So they were at, and they hadn't heard this story. And it's funny when you all get together, Chris, because you don't go into a Christmas lunch thinking you're going to tell a story, but something happens and something comes up and, and, and then it, you know, it triggers in your mind. Mm-hmm. So this is 84, 85, Mike Keenan's first year. And, and we were really good. We had a great start to the year. And this about three weeks before Christmas, the guys are looking at the schedule. And back then, you now you have three full days off, the 24th, the 25th, the 26th. You can't skate by the CBA. Mm-hmm. But back then, you could skate both Christmas Eve and Boxing Day, or the 26th. And so we, we looked at our schedule, and some of the young guys from Toronto started asking me about three or four weeks before Christmas, you know, because we Mike would print out the schedule for the month at the start of the month. So early December, we get the schedule for December, and it shows a Christmas Eve skate, I think, at 11 a.m. And we were playing at home on the 23rd. And so the guy would say to me as captain, you know, can you go to him and ask if we can get the skate moved up so we could fly home? And they found, like, an 11 a.m. flight. So we thought, okay, if we skate at 8 a.m., Mike always had short, crisp practices. It'll be done at 8.45, 9 o'clock, rush to the airport, get home, get a day and a half at home, and get back for our Boxing Day or 26th game. Boxing Day is a Canadian term, by the way. It's a day mm-hmm. after Christmas. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so I go to Mike and I say, okay, you know, here's the situation. And he looks at me and he says, just keep winning. That's all he said. So now I, now I go back to the guys and said, okay, so go ahead and make your plans. We'll keep winning and we'll get that skate moved up to 8 a.m. So everything falls in line perfectly. We win our games. They make their plans. And we come out for the 8 a.m. skate. And we have a great practice, Chris, like a great practice. Yeah. So about 8.30, Mike is winding up practice. And we had this 12-minute aerobic skate. And it would be one minute each way, six times one way, six times the other way. And at the end of each minute, he'd blow the whistle. You'd hoot and holler, go the other way. But it was aerobic, long strides. He brings a big music boombox out. He puts Christmas carols on. He's blaring Christmas carols. Guys are flying, Chris. Like, forget aerobic. It's anaerobic. Mm-hmm. Like, guys are sprinting. Guys are flying. Like, we're going home for Christmas, you know. Now, this these are 19 and 20 rolls. They're going home for the first time at Christmas as an NHL player. Right. At the end of it, Mike calls everybody together at 845. He lines us up on the goal line, and we skated for another 45 minutes. And it was the scene out of the miracle with Herb Brooks. Yeah. It was blue line, red line, blue line, down and back. Guys are sick. Guys are throwing up. Guys are cramping. Guys are screaming at Mike. They're calling him names. They're cursing at him. They're so mad. Mm-hmm. And he's just standing at center ice, blowing the whistle. And I mean, the, the anger you felt, the ridiculousness of the situation, I had arranged that morning to have beer and pizza brought to the locker room for the guys that were staying like because that's what you do at 8 30 on christmas eve in the morning is have a beer and have a piece of pizza right (laughs) Um, and uh and at the end he called everybody together and he's still got the christmas carols going guys are furious Mm -hmm. you know santa claus is coming so you are getting bag skated and and the big boom box is just bumping oh yeah (laughs) oh just pumping christmas carols and so uh (laughs) it, it was just you know it was it was so angry. Like, guys were so mad at the whole situation. Mm-hmm. And he called everybody together at the end, and he simply said, expect the unexpected, and uh, have a Merry Christmas. But what he wanted was he wanted guys going home, telling that story and thinking about him, and knowing that they were coming back. He didn't yeah. want them going home, celebrating life in the NHL. And the guys were miserable. And... You know, they rushed home and rushed back. And we went out the day after Christmas and we lost like six nothing to Washington. And guys were cramping. Guys could, you know, it was, it, but then we've got a 
back together, went on a little roll, you know, won some games. I think we were going west. We beat LA. I remember beating Edmonton a couple of days after Christmas or after New Year's rather. Mm-hmm. And it just being, you know, like somehow he won. Right. Um, but that was Mike. Mike was expect the unexpected. He wanted to keep you on edge. He wanted to keep you on guard. He never wanted you comfortable, which I disagreed with. Uh, I was a captain. A lot of the spirit fell to me, but it was effective and that he got a lot out of the players he had. <laughs> 